Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome to Horizon Forbidden West, the sequel to the award-winning Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, this video was supposed to go up yesterday, but I thought yesterday was today, and I'm crap. Anyway, um, <laughs> if you're not familiar with the events of the first game, uh, while the intro is running, I'll give you a brief recap. So, uh, this is Earth, a thousand years in the future. Looks a bit different. Nanotechnology got out of control, and a swarm of self-replicating von Neumann machines basically consumed all of the biomatter on the planet. It became apparent that there was absolutely nothing we could do to stop this. Everybody and everything was going to die. But while we couldn't survive it, it was possible to rebuild, which involved the construction of the Gaia Project. So the Gaia Project was broken down into a bunch of different components. Once the machines had finished killing and eating everything and then gone dormant, Gaia would then sterilise the planet, which was the only way to ensure that they'd been gotten rid of, and then begin a terraforming process to essentially reseed the planet with life. At the point where the planet was once again deemed suitable for human habitation, one of Gaia's subsystems would then develop human embryos into living people, which would be educated by another one of Gaia's subsystems, Apollo. This is where things went a little bit wrong, because Apollo had been sabotaged, and so Gaia had no option but to release feral, uneducated, primitive humans into the world, which formed the basis of the various different tribal systems that make up the human population of the world here in the game. All of the machines that populate the world are the terraforming machines that were created by Gaia to reseed the planet with life. There was one further complication though, Another subcomponent of the Gaia system, known as Hades, was designed as a sort of reset button if conditions created by Gaia weren't considered perfect. For one reason or another, Hades had gotten itself activated and was about to, well, basically wipe everything out once again. In the first game, and in this game, you play Aloy. Aloy was created by Gaia as a kind of last gasp backup measure to try to prevent Hades from completing its function. Although she was unaware of this at first, but would become aware of it, Aloy was actually a clone of the creator of the Gaia project, and as a clone would have had genetic access to Gaia's higher functions, and therefore be the only person capable of activating Gaia's systems and shutting Hades down. So that was the first game. All good? Everyone caught up? Everybody lived happily ever after? Yeah, not so much. Otherwise there wouldn't be a second game, would there? I'm running out of time, Elizabeth. The land is dying. People are suffering. Soon, I'll starve. All because of a terraforming system that's spiraling out of control. And only I can fix it. Only I have your genetic code. It won't be long before we hit the point of no return. And then, extinction. I've been searching for months for what I need. A backup of Gaia, the AIU designed to control the system. But every time I think I have a lead, it comes to nothing. And every night, I have the same dream. I'm walking under a brilliant night sky, through a field of flowers. And when I arrive at the center, I see you, Elizabeth. Waiting for me, even though you've been dead for a thousand years. You're the closest person I've ever had to a mother. And 
for a moment. I feel whole. But it never lasts. I'm always left alone. This world is your legacy, Elizabeth. I won't let it slip away. The valley below is my only remaining lead. My last hope to find the backup. I'll do whatever it takes to get it. I promise. Oh, this guy. Varl? <laughs> if it isn't Aloy, the savior of Meridian, anointed of the Nora. You know I hate being called that stuff. Well... Consider it a punishment for running out on us the very same night we beat Hades. I grew up an outcast. Remember, I'm not much for parties. Yeah. But that one was in your honor. Just saying. So! What are we doing? Must be urgent since you left so fast. Delving into ancient ruins? Or maybe it has something to do with the Blight. Both, actually, but, um... I, I should... Oh, no. I've been tracking you a long way. It's okay. After everything you've done to help the Nora and my family, I swore an oath to help you, no matter what. You're stuck with me now. Yeah, but your oath isn't my problem, like is it? Bark on wood. Well, I guess it is. <laughs> Vol isn't a bad person, by the way. It's just a pain in the ass. Okay. But if you're going to come with me, you'll need to be able to see what I see. <sighs> a focus? Never thought I'd get your second sight. I'll give you another one later and show you how to back up your data. Data? Information on the device. We've got a lot to cover. Um, I'll have to explain everything as we go. He's the son of the Nora tribe, war chief from the first game. Even though he is a bit of a pain in the arse, I, mean, I can see why they've introduced him as a companion character here in the second game. You see like this all the time? Since I was a little girl. Come on. You see, in the first game, Aloy falls into uh, some cavernous ruins and discovers one of these remotes that allows her to interact with the remnants of human technology. And you learn to use it with her as a sort of natural part of the game progression. But it would be a bit weird if she had to relearn how to use it all again in the second game. Shall we? Which is where Vol steps in, because this is all new to him, and so if you've never played the first game, or if you're like me and you can't remember how it worked in the first game because it was years ago, then Aloy's teaching Vol how to use the remote, but what she's actually doing right. I got a of is teaching you. On the way here. We should find some medicinal plants, stock up. So it's time for your first lesson with the focus. Sounds good. Let's get started. These plants don't look like the ones in the sacred lands. The focus helps you see the ones we need. So you can tap the V key to send out a pulse from the focus, like that. There. Those plants by the stream should do the trick. And it highlights any useful items within range, in this case, medicinal plants. Now you can carry a limited number of these. And you start off with a fairly generous amount, once you've collected them. Um, but there is a crafting system in the game and you can expand the capacity of your medicine pouch. So this red blight, and I'm getting flashbacks to War of the Worlds here, this is the source of concern here in the sequel. <coughs> I've 
Blight's infecting all the plants. It's changing them. If it keeps spreading, nothing will grow. That's why we have to fix it. Obviously, this is very early in the game, so this is a bit of a wild guess. Those ruins. That's where we need to go. I see a few ways down. What are we after exactly? The backup? Well, um, it's an AI. It's um. It's hard to explain. Think of it like a set of instructions that can fix the world. Sounds complicated. I don't know who put these ropes here, but we can use the line to slide down. But my initial working theory is that this red blight is as a result of some of Gaia's terraforming systems yeah, doing something that I, they're um, probably not supposed to be doing. On the way here. Lost a lot of my gear. Oh, by the way, quick bit of trivia for you. The voice actress who plays Aloy, Ashley Birch. Some of you have probably heard her before, but you wouldn't recognise the voice. She's the same actress who did the voice of Tiny Tina in the Borderlands games. <laughs> yeah, I know. She's got quite a range, hasn't she? Locks. Salvaging machine carcasses as usual. And there they go. Looks like they left a carcass behind. You won't see any natural creatures in the world bigger than a fox. Anything bigger than that is a machine. And the machines have pretty much occupied the ecological niches by any animal life bigger than, you know, a dog or a fox or a particularly large cat. The machines, of course, are all terraforming machines created by Gaia in order to, well, create all of this. Their work is done, but I suppose once you've created the Garden of Eden, something has to maintain it. And there are still forges producing more of them. A lot of arrows on that machine. Better take a closer look. Someone took down this machine recently. Who else would come here? I don't know. We better craft some arrows of our own. There might be trouble up ahead. There's some ridgewood by the stream. There's also a whole bunch of perfectly serviceable arrows sticking out the cogs of that machine, but, well, whatever. Crafting system again, so... Uh, you can make your own ammunition on the fly. Again, all right. it's all part of the crafting system. Now to craft some arrows. It's not terribly realistic, but, I mean, that's fine. It's not like this is a simulator, after all. By which I mean that if you actually run out of ammo in the middle of a fight, you can pause the game, pull up the crafting menu, make another 20 arrows, <laughs> and then carry on from where you left off. But like I said, this is fine. It's not a simulation. Me too. Arrows ready. Just in case it wasn't obvious what Aloy's doing and why she's here, she's trying to find a backup of Gaia's master program. There's a ladder. But can't reach it from here. Nothing a well-placed arrow can't knock free. Just have to target the lock. See, the original guy uh, once it realized what Hades was up to, tried to prevent Hades from completing its programming by basically wiping herself. But it didn't work. Right before she took that last irrevocable step, however, Gaia created Aloy as a clone baby of her I creator, as a sort of last gasp, desperate Hail this? Mary. Failsafe attempt. I don't know. The transmission. The uh, message I found didn't say. Only that a backup might be here. That plan did I need work. To find a way in. That was the first game. So, um, what happened after I left Meridian? Well, there was a fuss when people realized you were gone. But then some of us figured you only would have left if it were for something important. You were right about that. The blight's not just poisoning plants. It's killing animals, too. Then people will get sick, too. And starve. We're not gonna let that happen. All of this, of course, means that there's no master program controlling the terraforming systems. I mean, Gaia itself was the master program, composed of a whole bunch of other different terraforming programs. Uh, Hades was one of them. Apollo was one of them. And so Aloy is here, wherever here is, trying to find a backup of that master program. Find anything good? 
A few supplies. There was at least one other loose end from the first game that hopefully we're going to see answers to in this one. Uh, one of which was revealed in a post credit scene involving the sort of mentor way. and guiding character from the first game who went by the name of Silence. Second. Okay. See how parts of it are glowing? Those are its weak spots. Got it. Oh yes, weak spot combat. Don't expect me to be any good at this, by the way. <laughs> but anyway, back to those unanswered questions from the first game. So Silence, who was played by the late great Lance Reddick, by the way. Uh, most of you probably know him best as the concierge from the Continental Hotel in the John Wick movies. Silence was a character who knew a great deal of what had been going on and understood some of the history of what had happened over the past thousand years in the world. I mean, he didn't know everything, but he certainly knew more than Aloy did at first. And while he was definitely Another using Aloy uh, to serve his own purposes, a lot of the time their aims matched. They both wanted to stop Hades after all, so even though he never really told Aloy everything that he knew, their aims matched and they were able to work together and help each other. How does the focus know all that? It reads data on the machine. Like a hunter studying its prey? Yeah, kind of. Aloy and Silence rarely, if ever, actually met in person. Uh, they just communicated with each other so using the I focus. Fuss over me leaving. What did everyone else do? Well, as soon as the celebration was over, my mother led the rest of the Nora home. The Sun King put his people to work rebuilding the city. And I set out to find you. Here's the thing, though. Hades didn't just wake up one day and decide, you know what, I'm Someone bored. This today, too. I'm going to reactivate all of those self-replicating nano-machines that wiped out all life on the planet a thousand years ago, and we're going to do it all again. Hades was switched on deliberately. Somebody sent an activation signal. Don't know who, don't know where the signal came from. But that's the task that Silence set himself to discovering in the post credit sequence at the end of the first game. And hopefully, the sequel is going to explore that further. Yeah, found my first one when I fell into a ruin. Got the others from an old cache not long ago. That's good to have extras. By the way, if you haven't played the first game, or you haven't watched my video uh, playthrough of it, I highly recommend you get it. It's currently available on Steam. The complete edition of the game is currently available on Steam for $9.99. It is an absolute bargain and a masterpiece of world building and storytelling. Going into the ruin of the old ones. God has protect us. We'll be okay, Varl. Welcome to the Far Zenith launch facility. Farzinus? I know they made some tech trades with Zero Dawn, but why would they have a backup of Gaia? Please register with reception for the tour. I guess they want us to check in with them. Please hold for identity scan. Access denied. Please wait here for personnel to assist you. Dr. Sobek. Okay. I guess they weren't on great terms with Elizabeth. Well, let's find a way in. Oh yeah, the uh, the Gaia project wasn't the only plan that the world came up with for surviving or circumventing the uh, machine apocalypse. Should be able to the Far Zenith project was an escape ship for the obscenely rich. Although that, of course, is not how it was marketed. You can imagine how successful that investment pitch would have been. Hi, uh, we're building a lifeboat for Elon Musk. Would you care here. to invest? <laughs> someone dropped in from above. Yeah. Whoever left this here might have also shot those machines we found earlier. So where are they now? It does, of course, beg the question, because, of course, they had no interest in the Gaia project whatsoever. They weren't trying to save the world. They were abandoning it. Um, 
So why would the Far Zenith project have a backup of Gaia? Ugh. What's that stench? Entire camp. Why doubt? They must have come here to Del for scrap. Acid. That explains the smell. And it looks like something big came in from above. Crashed right through the camp. Then through the wall. I should take a look at the rubble in that gap. All right, we'll give it a scan. Whatever came through here brought this down as it went out. If I can dislodge some of the debris, we might be able to squeeze through. Maybe I can find something to help in the camp. Aloy, over here. I think I got something. Some kind of Osram prototype, I think. This hook looks like it can latch onto things. And this gear pulls it back. Hmm. It looks broken, but maybe we can repair it. Hook it to the debris. And pull it out. That could work. The focus can help us search the camp and identify anything we can use to fix the tool. My focus picked up a couple of things to check out. I remember one of the things that I found particularly amusing about the first game was... Um, right through his armor. Well, Aloy's tribe, the Nora. They're presented in the first game... Well, it's not just the, the Nora. Um, all of the various different tribes throughout the game. Um, it, this is true of them as it is of the Nora. But for the first couple of hours of the game, the Nora are the only tribe that you know. And they are presented as a racially diverse, multicultural, happy clappy, hippy trippy bunch of relatively peaceful people living in harmony and coexistence. And this was clearly a deliberate choice made by the games developers to show people from all kinds of racial and, well, to show people whose ancestors came from all different kinds of cultural and racial backgrounds living together in peace and harmony as one tribe, the Nora. But the thing is, if you, if you stop to actually think about the implications, you've got a, a society where everybody still looks distinctly European or Asian or African or whatever. This means that for the last thousand years, that society has been practicing apartheid. <laughs> uh, there has been no oh, racial yeah. interbreeding at all. Otherwise, everybody would look the same. Everybody would be a sort of faintly pale brown skin colour but instead you still have distinct racial groups which means the Asians are only breeding with the Asians the Europeans are only breeding with the Europeans and the Africans are only breeding with the Africans so and this is the funny part in an effort to show diversity and inclusion what they're actually showing is deeply ingrained cultural racism <laughs> and I think that's hilarious <laughs> Better than I thought. So this pull caster is a new tool that wasn't available in the first game, which means well, new game mechanics and like new puzzles. Easy way out of here. I should scan the area. We have to find a way to keep going. Huh. What's this thing for? More realistically, it probably just means new and interesting ways for me to embarrass myself by screwing up the puzzles. <laughs> so <laughs> let's have a look around. There's a data console up ahead, which probably means more information. Oh, and a grapple point. Get up there. Uh, use the grapple this? point. Now, first I'm going to check out the console. Let's find some stuff out. Whoa. Good morning. I'm Oswald Dalgard, and it is my pleasure to introduce you to Far Zenith. Forget what you think you know about us. Our truth is simple. We say reach for the stars, even if you have to cross 8.6 light years of space to get there. Please proceed into the auditorium, where we'll unveil our plans. Wonder what's in this auditorium. Guess we'll find out. Yeah, I guess we will. Just not today, because I think uh, I think that's enough for one video. 
We'll definitely be coming back to this in the future, however. Now that I've finished Little Kitty Big City, I need something to play on Wednesdays and Saturdays. And that something is wow. probably going to be Horizon Forbidden yeah, West, the sequel to the award-winning and fantastic Horizon Zero Dawn. Don't so worry, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope it's whetted your appetite for things to come. Hope you're all having a great day. As always, take care, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>